Now, while we're on the topic of vegetables, a lot of people from the keto and carnivore community are probably jumping in like, no, don't eat fruits, don't eat carbohydrates. Come on, that stuff bad for you, right? And all over the internet, you know, you're taught that carbohydrates are bad for you and that you should eat a low-carb diet because carbs are going to raise your blood sugar or your blood glucose. They're going to be stored as fat. Their carbs are the equivalent of table sugar. Carbs are going to make you gain weight. They're empty calories and that all carbs are created equal, meaning a banana is equivalent to candy. And this is actually one of the most dangerous problems within the weight loss world is this fundamental misunderstanding, misinformation about what a carbohydrate actually is and whether or not all carbohydrates are created equal. Okay. The general recommendation in the world of social media today is to eat a fat heavy diet with a huge emphasis on meat and dairy products and organ meats. And that this is the uh, most effective diet for long-term health. And it's the way to eat a quote unquote ancestrally relevant primal diet. And truth be told, I mean, it looks attractive, right? I mean, who doesn't want to eat steak for dinner every single night or for, heck steak for breakfast? I mean, I would like that opportunity. At least I used to when I was, you know, eating a meat heavy diet. What makes it even worse is that if you look around the internet, you'll see that there are people losing weight very quickly. You type in the word ketogenic diet into Google, you look at images and you just see, you know, person after person after person saying, I used to be 300 pounds. Now I'm 160. I used to be 250 pounds. I lost 60 pounds. I used to be 270 pounds. Now I'm 140, right? But what people don't recognize is that by eating a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet is that they're actually increasing their chronic disease risk by eating less carbohydrate material, especially if that carbohydrate material comes from whole sources like we just talked about. Now, we always say that there are things that we know are going to make you lose weight, okay? Here's what you can do to lose weight. Number one, you can get the flu. The flu is a fantastic weight loss strategy. Number two, you can amputate your arm. That's going to probably get you to lose, I don't know, probably like 10 to 15 pounds, okay? Or you can just pick up a cocaine habit, right? But here's the truth. Those are all terrible ideas, okay? They're going to help you lose weight, but at what cost, okay? So, before you get worried about eating carbohydrates, I want you to just take a step back and let's talk about the two types of carbohydrate energy that actually exist. And we're just going to make it real simple because there are two types and they are not created equal. We cannot talk about carbs or carbohydrate energy as one entity. We have to separate it into two separate groups or two separate entities. And once we do that, then we can talk about, about them in a more educated manner. Okay. The green light foods that we talked about earlier. Those are all carbohydrate rich foods. And I listed a whole collection of what they are. Okay. Those carbohydrates are whole carbohydrates. So category number one refers to whole carbohydrates that are fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, mushrooms, herbs and spices, non-starchy vegetables, starchy vegetables, and green leafy vegetables. Those our whole carbohydrates. Again, minimally processed or not processed at all, generally find growing in a tree, on a bush, in the ground, okay? Don't require much processing, can be eaten in a raw state or can be eaten lightly cooked. Refined carbs are napalm. Get them out of your diet. We can all agree on that. I don't care what philosophy you come from, whether it's a paleo diet or a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet or a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or a Mediterranean diet, Everyone agrees that refined carbohydrates are nutritional napalm. Get them out of your diet and try and keep them out of your diet in the long term. All right. Now, these refined carbohydrates come from things like sugars and syrups and packaged foods. They're otherwise known as simple carbs. And they're the end product of a manufacturing process that began with a whole food like sugarcane or sugar beets and resulted in a crystalline substance that contains either only glucose or fructose or a combination of glucose and fructose known as sucrose. The manufacturing process stripped these original whole foods of their protective micronutrients, which includes vitamins and minerals and fiber and water and antioxidants and phytochemicals. And the end product was rendered almost nutritionally useless apart from having a sweet flavor and having some calories, okay? Whole carbohydrates, on the other hand, are found in whole foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains, and they exist in a three-dimensional matrix of many nutrients and are extremely complex packages of information that your digestive system has the ability to interpret, 
to unpackage and distribute to tissues all throughout your body. All whole foods have a similar three-dimensional construction, but they slightly differ in the types and the amounts of carbohydrate and fat and protein and vitamins and minerals and fiber and water and antioxidants and phytochemicals that are inside. But the point is that the three-dimensional matrix is held together by this stuff called fiber. Fiber combines with water and carbohydrate, fat, and protein, the macronutrients plus the micronutrients to create a very complex three-dimensional matrix. And when you eat that matrix, it takes time and it takes digestive power to be able to unpack those nutrients and distribute them to tissues all throughout your body. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the research, the results are very clear. Okay. For pretty much any health outcome that you want, like reduction in heart disease, increased longevity, more energy, reduced cancer risk, and of course, weight loss, you're going to find that whole carbohydrates are going to push you in the right direction while refined carbohydrates are going to lead you in the wrong direction. Okay. This is one of the reasons that ketogenic and carnivore diets are so misleading because they're cutting out all of the refined carbohydrates, like refined sugars. And based off of that claim, they claim that the entire diet has a focus on quote unquote, clean and healthy foods, but they're missing out that the Increased fat content and increased protein content and increased consumption of meat and dairy products has significant risks in the long term compared to plant based diets and the consumption of more carbohydrate rich foods. Now, we have lots of videos and articles on our website about the risks of consuming more meat, but let's hit them real quickly so that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, there's some meats like fish and organ meats that are less problematic than the processed meats that have recently been classified as either a class one or a class two, a carcinogen by the world health organization. Okay. Processed meats like salami, bacon, sausages, and hot dogs were given a group one classification, which means that there is sufficient scientific evidence that they do in fact cause cancer. I will say that again, processed meats, including salami, bacon, sausages, and hot dogs were given a group one classification, which means that there is sufficient evidence that they do in fact cause cancer. They're not just suspected, they cause cancer without a shadow of a doubt. Red meats, including veal, pork, beef, lamb, horse, and goat were given a group 2A classification, which means that they probably cause cancer. Add in that the elevated risk of heart disease exists and weight gain and chronic disease that is well studied with all of the meats mentioned above. And you can see that while keto and carnivore diets are right in recommending that you cut out the refined carbohydrates or the simple sugars, the answer is not necessarily to replace them with more meat. Okay. So if you want to lose weight or if you want to live to hundred or you want to be faster on your feet or have more energy, a plant-based diet that is high in carbohydrate energy from whole sources is going to win every single time. So what's the alternative you ask? Well, the alternative is very simple. Eat as many natural carbohydrates and whole foods as you possibly can. A low fat plant-based whole food diet is the focus. I've said this a thousand times before and I will cont continue to say it. Okay, you can eat these foods as much as possible. They have additional benefits. They do not have additional risks. And those benefits include reduced blood pressure, reduced LDL cholesterol, reduced high sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation, reduced body weight, improved gut microbiome diversity, reduced lipid deposition in liver, which is causative in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, reduced lipid deposition in muscle, which is causative in peripheral insulin resistance, reduced risk for dementia and Alzheimer's disease, otherwise known as type three diabetes, reduced risk for chronic kidney disease, improved cardiac function, reduce oxidized LDL and arterial plaque in blood vessels, the reduced risk and severity of infectious diseases like viral infections such as the cold, flu, and more. And there's also a whole bunch of intangible benefits like increased energy levels and a greater sense of well-being and increased happiness and improved mood. And who doesn't want all of that, right? So if you look at hundreds of research papers on the topic, you're going to see exactly what I'm referring to. Over and over, you see studies demonstrating the role of a plant-based diet in promoting health and longevity, or plant-based diets improve cardiovascular health. I realize I'm just showing you the titles of these papers, but I'm, I want you to understand that these papers exist and we can go into them in detail. We continue will over the course of time, but there's no end to how many papers you will find about the benefits of a plant-based diet.
And you also find papers about the plant-based diets for the treatment of obesity, which is exactly what we're talking about here today, which is a reduction in body weight in the short term and the long term. You also see other papers about the effects of vegetarian and vegan diets on gut microbiota, which is an, another subject that Dr. Will Bulsowitz brought to the table in his book, Fiber Fueled, which if you haven't read that book, is a phenomenal book and I highly recommend. Okay. And then finally, you'll see that there's other papers talking about the role of a plant-based diet on communicable diseases, which again are infectious diseases. And we learned about this during the COVID-19 pandemic and about how eat those who eat a plant-based diet are actually at a lower risk for the development of and for the transmission of COVID-19. Now, there's a lot of people who worry about how unsatisfying a plant-based diet is going to be. And to that, we have two things to say. Number one, if you haven't tried the right recipes, concentrating on foods that are delicious, that have a low calorie density, but are filling, then we should talk about that. Number two, your taste buds may not like this approach at first. I get it. I was that person 20 years ago. Okay. But what I didn't realize is that my taste buds actually adapted very quickly because I was putting in a whole collection of new foods that my taste buds just hadn't had for years. And over the course of a few weeks, my tongue then sent dopamine producing signals up to my brain, which then increased my desire to want to eat more of these plant-based foods. And then I continued to do it. And the dopamine response got bigger and better and stronger. And as a result of that, it now makes it so that I subconsciously want to eat as much plant-based material as possible because I have thousands of meals under my belt and has demonstrated to me that they are the most delicious foods that money can buy. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. Now the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's gonna show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.